All right, Shalom. First off, give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rokar Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS. Salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring, in truth and sincerity, and the women and children who follow. So, it's been on my spirit to, you know, kind of dig in on this. So, with that being said, you see the title. This is a Lord of Glory's Will. It's going to be a series that I do on the different parts of Jacob's trouble. And um, as you can see, I'm starting off with martial law. So I just wanted to just dive in deep on the whole subject of martial law and, uh, you know, pull out some precepts and examples in the scriptures of um, how it's going to be in that day, man, basically. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get the actual definition of uh, martial law. And, uh, I mean, if you go to just like Google and type it in, it'll say that the military government involving the suspension of ordinary law. According to Wikipedia, uh, it's uh, martial law is the imposition of direct military control of normal civilian functions of government especially in response to a temporary emergency such as invasion or a major disaster or in an occupied territory. So basically what martial law is, is when the military take over basic normal civilian functions like, uh, like the police force. When the military has become your police force, you are under what's called martial law, okay? All normal law is not is not uh, in effect. Okay, they have control over everything. If they want to put a curfew up, you got to be inside within that curfew, or they can shoot you dead. If they put up a roadblock, you can't go outside that roadblock. You can't get in that roadblock. Okay, when they decide to to cut off the city, you stuck in that city. All right, there's no getting in. There's no getting out. All right, and we're gonna give some uh, some examples of that in history and in the, the scriptures as well. Uh, also, uh, me and a brother you call him off. We did a um, a really edifying video a few months back uh, about the interstate system here in America and how they're gonna use that uh, when when martial law comes. But um, what I want to do, uh, I want to get this uh, the scripture real quick. Which is uh, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, For none of those things which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye may have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give, and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay, so, uh, Slocky, that's actually for concentration camps. Slocky, I shouldn't have read that. But still, um, who you think is going to throw you into a concentration camp? You're going to get picked up by martial law. Martial law would actually be the... There'd be no other reason to to uh, throw you in a concentration camp if normal civilian activities were still going on. Unless you were uh, caught up in, in a terrorist wave or something like that. But that's a, that's a whole other lesson. But um, to get back to it, okay... That's what martial law is. And like I said, I want to give a couple of examples uh, in the scriptures. But one thing I do want to read, I want to read this uh, excerpt from um, the Josephus. As you see it on your screen right now, I can't pronounce that website, so you see it. But uh, it's basically the Siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD by Josephus. It says... Throughout the city, people were dying of hunger. Now, this is talking about, like I said, 70 AD. This is when the the uh, Greeks had had came down on Jerusalem uh, during one of the uh, the I believe it was the the first uprising of of uh, the Jews. Okay, so it's giving an account of what actually happened, what it was like. Okay. Uh, okay, I guess it was the Romans that, that came down. Greeks, Romans, the same, same difference. All right, um, it says, Throughout the city, people were dying of hunger in large numbers. 
and enduring unspeakable sufferings. In every house, uh, the merest hint of food sparked violence, and close relatives fell the blows, snatching from one another the pitiful, uh, the pitiful supports of life. No respect was paid even to the dying. Okay, so right now what we're, what we're going through, we're talking about a real, a real bad time. As a matter of fact, let's let's get that scripture real quick because that's the basis of the of the lesson that's the basis of um, really the series this is Daniel 12 and 1 and at that time uh, show Michael and at that and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince will show standeth for the uh, thy, for the children of thy people and there should be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even at that same time that the time thy even at that time thy people shall be delivered one <clears throat> everyone that shall be found written in the book okay I'm gonna read that one more time it was kind of choppy and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince will stand before the children of thy people and there should be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same even the same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book okay so that's the time that we're going to be delivered out of America but like it said it's going to be a time that never was before it's going to be a time that you ain't never uh, seen that, that you really can't compare okay I'm doing this lesson right now just to give you an idea okay it said that people in endure unspeakable sufferings that's what's gonna happen in that day unspeakable sufferings if you don't get the Lord on your side then you're not gonna make it okay um, let me get a, another scripture real quick because it made a statement um, uh, let me see well matter of fact I'll just I'll get the uh, <clears throat> Second Ezra chapter 15, and I mean the whole chapter is good, but I'm gonna start at verse uh, 14. It says, "Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw off nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands, for there should be sedition among men and in invading one another, and they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power." Okay, so one people fighting against another and swords in their hands, that's conflict, okay? Mainly talking about a, a, a racial war, okay? And also people not obeying their, their kings or princes and you know, people invading one another. It's going to go into that, man. This is a really uh, good good piece that I'm going to go through with y'all, so just uh, bear with me. Um, it says, a man shall desire to go into a city and not be able. That's what I was talking about before. You're not going to be able to go in and out of the city with martial law there. This is a siege. These people aren't able to, it says, come and go as they please inside and outside the city. Okay? It says, uh, for because of the pride, the city shall be troubled and the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Okay? Now, I want to focus on this last verse, verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. It said right there that uh, in every house, the merest hint of food sparked violence. Okay? And close relatives fell to blows, snatching from one another the pitiful supports of life. Okay? Back in the scriptures. But, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Okay, so for the lack of bread, people people going to do anything when it's time to feed themselves, feed their kids. Alright? They did it back then, they're going to do it today. So, I mean, with that, I'm going to, you know, keep reading. 
It says, no respect was paid even to the dying. The ruffians, the anti-Roman zealots, searched them in case they were concealing food somewhere in their clothes. So if you were laying there, uh, you know, damn near dead, you still got searched. They, they didn't care. Okay, so I'm going to get one more scripture, you know, with that being said. We're going to go to Jeremiah, the 34th chapter, starting at verse 20. It says, I will I will even give them into the hand of their enemies and into the land of them, it's, it's, it's like, and into the hand of them that seek their life, and their dead bodies shall be for meat unto the fowls of heaven and, no, and to the beasts of the earth. Okay, so... That's, the, the dead bodies is going to be everywhere piled up in that day, man. They did it back then. They're going to do it today, man. This is a prophecy. That happened back then. But this is a prophecy for today here in uh, America and Babylon. So you best believe it, you know. There's nothing. Uh, it, everything that was then is going to be now, okay? It's reincarnation. That's This is a situation that's going to be reincarnated and placed here in America. It says, uh, in case they were concealing food somewhere in their clothes or just pretending to be near death, gaping with hunger like mad dogs, lawless gangs went staggering and reeling through the streets, battering upon the doors like drunkards, and so bewildered that they broke into the same house two or three times in an hour. So they didn't even know they just was going everywhere, breaking into the same house a couple times. And he drove the starving to gnaw at anything. Need drove the starving to gnaw at anything. So uh, the want and need, they would eat anything. It says, refuse which uh, even animals would reject was collected and turned into food. In the end, they were eating belts and shoes and the leather stripped off of their shields. Uh, tufts of withered grass were devoured and sold into a little bundle for four drachmas. Okay, so they were eating anything, stuff that even animals wouldn't eat, like right, leather, belts, shoes, whatever they can get their hands on. Why? Because they were starving. Hunger is a, a terrible way to, to die. Okay, and, and the scriptures speak about famine. All right, famine and, uh, matter of fact, since we said it, you know, we're going to go ahead and get that. Uh, give me a moment. This is uh, Matthew chapter 24 and we're going to start at verse 15 it says uh, when ye therefore should see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the uh, by Daniel the prophet stand in thy holy place whosoever readeth let him understand then let them which be in Judea Hold on, nope, nope, this is, this is not the one I want right now. Um, it's like it. The one I want is Matthew 24 and 7. This is, uh, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there should be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Okay, so, that's, that's plain. There's going to be famines, okay? You're going to have a time... Or there's not going to be any food. Okay, when the economy crashes and those those gas trucks can't can't get the food into the stores, there's three days worth of food in the stores. Once that food's gone, what you gonna do? The the, the food's gonna be gone the first day. So after that first week, it's gonna start getting real because anything that you had left in your house. After week one, if, if people ain't already came and, and snatched it out, it's going to get really real. That's that's when the shit's going to hit the fan, but that fan's going to get turned on week one, week two, week three, week four. A month in, you're not even going to recognize this place. It's going to be, like I said, it's gonna, law, lawless gangs will rule the, the place, will rule the country. And you'll have martial law set up everywhere. So you're going to have, you're going to be running to and fro. 
Like, uh, matter of fact, let's get that. Bear with me. This is uh, Amos chapter 5 and uh, verse 19 it says as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand upon the wall and a serpent bit him. Okay. Matter of fact let me start back up on 18 it says woe to you that desire the day of the Lord for what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Or went to the house and leaned his leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bent him. Alright, so that's what we have to, to look forward to in that day, man. Alright, you're gonna be running from terror to terror to terror. Alright. So um but we're gonna keep it keep it going. I'm gonna read a little bit more into this. It says, uh but while but why dwell on the com the sorry, but why dwell on the commonplace rubbish? which the starving were driven to feed upon. Give her that uh, what I have to recount is an act unparalleled in the history of either the Greeks or the barbarians and as horrible to relate as it is incredible to hear. Okay, so at that time, that was a time that was never before. It was unparalleled in history. Okay, he says, for my part, I should gladly have omitted this tragedy. At least I should be suspected of monstrous fabrication but there were many witnesses of it among my contemporaries and besides I should do poor service to my country if I were to suppress the agony she went through so basically he's saying it's so bad that I probably shouldn't even be writing this but there was a lot of other witnesses and I mean even if you're reading this you probably think I'm lying but there were many other witnesses and if I don't tell this story, then I will be doing my people in an injustice. Okay, it says, among the residents of the region beyond Jordan was a woman, okay, called Mary, daughter of Eleazar of the village of Bezuba, which means a house of hyssop. She was well off and of, good, and of a good family and had fled Jerusalem with her relatives where she became uh, involved with the siege. Most of the property she packed up and brought with her from Perea had been plundered by the tyrants, says Simon and John, leaders of the Jewish war effect. And the rest of her treasure, together with such foods as she had been able to procure, was being carried by uh, their henchmen in their daily raids. In her bitter resentment, the poor woman cursed and, uh, and abused these extortioners and and this licensed them against her it says 
However, no one put her to death either from exasperation or pity. She grew weary of trying to find food for her kinsfolk. Uh, in any case, it was by now impossible to get to get any. It's like it. Uh, wherever you tried, famine gnawed at her vitals, and the fire uh, rage. It's like it, and the fire of rage was ever fiercer than the, fiercer, fiercer than the famine. So driven by fury and want, she committed a crime against nature. Seizing her child, an infant at the breast, she cried, "My poor baby, why should I uh, keep you alive in this world of war and famine? Even if we live till the Romans come, they'll make us. They'll make slaves of us. And anyway, hunger." will get us before the slavery does and the rebels are crueler than both okay it says come be fool for me and a, and an avenging fury to the rebels and a tale of cold horror to the world to complete the the monstrous agony of the jews okay so i'm gonna get that in the scriptures like i said it all comes back to the scriptures everything is in the scriptures everything is, is made uh, an account of for our for our learning and so that we know um, basically where you come from and where you're going okay so I'm gonna start at a uh, second Kings ver uh, chapter 6 verse 25 it says and there was a great famine in Samaria and behold they besieged it so it's a besieged city okay is basically under martial law uh, until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of, dove, of, of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall. There cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And, she, and he said, If the lord do, do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn door, or out of the barn floor, or out of the wind, or out of the wine press, and the king said unto her, "What aileth thee?" And she answered, "This woman said unto me, uh, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow." So we boiled him and did eat him. And I said unto her the next day, "Give thy son that we may eat him," and she hath hid her son. Okay, so they were eating children back in that day. Why? Because the city was sieged and there was famine in the land okay so much that it made people eat their children and trick other people into eating their children and that happened way back in in um, in the time of Elisha okay now we're reading an account of it happening in the time uh, uh, directly after Yahweh Shai passed okay Yahweh Shai was, was murdered and uh, our, our nation went down. And it's going to happen again um, in Jacob's trouble in these times when we're set to be delivered. Okay, so it says, with these words, she killed her son. Uh, she killed her son, roasted the body, swallowed half of it, and stored the rest in a safe place. But the rebels were on her at once, smelling roasted meat. Okay. And I don't know if you ever fasted before, but when you fast, your your senses get heightened. So they probably smelled that coming that that roasted smell of actual meat from a mile away. So it says the soldiers, you know, ran up on her basically, and and threatened to kill her instantly if she did not produce it. She assured them that she had saved them a share. And revealed the remains of her child. Seized with horror and stupefaction, they stood paralyzed at the sight. But she said, This is my own child and my own handiwork. Eat, for I have eaten already. Do not show yourself weaker than a woman or more pitiful than a mother. But if you have pious scruples and shrink away from human sacrifice, then what I have eaten can count as your share. And I will consume. And I will eat what is left as well. And uh, at that, they slunk away, trembling, not daring to eat, although they were reluctant to yield 
even this food, uh, the mud, uh, although they were reluctant to yield even this food to the mother, the whole city soon rang with, abom with the abomination. And the people heard of it, they shuddered as though they had done it themselves. So, I mean, it was so unspeakable at the time, they didn't even want to eat it. They were so hungry, but, you know, they didn't want to go through it. But it's going to be that desperate. It's just the fact that she did that, you know, and she did it for, to give the, the account of how bad it really was at that time. Um, let me see. It's a couple more scriptures. You no, know, that's that's pretty much all the scriptures I wanted to hit. There is a, um, a part two to this, which is uh, basically the siege of uh, Masada. Now, I'm a... a it's a video that I'm gonna show for that. So if you watch the second video, that's what that is. Um, I just want to definitely want to thank y'all for you know if you made it this far for rocking with me. You know, um, martial law ain't no joke, man. It really ain't no joke. But uh, definitely want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Makar Kadash, the Abanus to the Apostles and the Elders of GMS, salutes and honors to the elect. All the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity and the women and children who follow. Shalom.